my master. And he betrayed me. Lucario. Betrayed and left in the hyperbolic time chamber. What's up, Pocket Dudes? Welcome to Pokemon Go to the Movies, the theatrical release Pokemon film podcast. I'm your host, Dan Video Games, and with me is Bob. Betrayal. Chris Wolfhart. <laughs> Dr. Agro. I am one with the aura. The aura is with me. And Millennium Mike's very own Shibuya Gato. Aura Borealis at this time of year in this particular location. God damn it. <laughs> you guys can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> What's this movie? It is just a case that says open and hit aggro with this. <laughs> this time we're talking about Pokemon colon Lucario and the mystery of Mew. Or as it's known in Japan, Pocket Monsters Advanced Generation the movie colon... Mew and the Wave Hero. <laughs> He's a good surfer. Oh. Uh, I, I took it as one of those, like, back in 2008 with the recession, they had a bunch of Wave Heroes outside wearing <laughs> outfits trying to get people to come into businesses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lucario's like, I wish I had a better job. I'm so hot. <laughs> I thought the Wave Hero in Pokemon was that guy who surfed Humunga Dunga. <laughs> Do you mean Brawly from Gen 3? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Humonga Dunga isn't a real Pokemon, is it? <laughs> no, it's a wave. No, okay, give it yeah. another gen or two, Bob. Don't worry. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> if it isn't yet, it might be eventually. We're going to start hearing the bottom of the barrel sound <laughs> any day now. The, especially, especially if they do something insane and they're like, we have 150 new ones again. <laughs> Anyway, uh, this is the eighth movie, and I'm very excited to talk about it, so let's get into it. Your usual intro narration for a Pokemon movie happens here, from the perspective of space, looking at the Earth, while sliding PNGs of Pokemon fall down the screen. We have all these. We have all this concept art, just make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> it feels cheaper than ever, but they have a graphic of a, t of a tree growing up in front of the Earth. And then they cut to the inside of a Pokeball where they have a fancy clip reel. The intro narration concludes with Ash and friends just hanging out on the grass as it goes. Together, humans and Pokemon will carry on the story facing new challenges and sharing new adventures that will become the tales of tomorrow. But even tomorrow's stories may have begun long ago. Like this tale that begins in the legendary past before Pokeballs ever existed. And then Bob just like shot up like lightning hit him. He's just like, okay, then Legend Zarceus is here in the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> <have> to, place <laughs> it. to be fair, I also had that thought. <laughs> I looked over, there was red string all over the wall. <laughs> This happens, we do a fade into, you know, as it calls it, the legendary past. Ho-Oh flies past the screen, and there you go, Ho-Oh fans. You finally get some Ho-Oh representation in these movies. And, mm. and we fade down to Lucario running through the fog. He goes, Aura is with me. And then he starts sensing and he senses through space as an army of men and Pokemon clad in red armor are marching through this valley he's in. And then he peers the other way psychically and senses an army clad in green. And Lucario looks up at Ho-Oh, definitely Ho-Oh, flying overhead. <laughs> and as he looks at this, he's like, oh, hey, look at that Ho-Oh. I'm glad we got a Ho-Oh in this movie. He gets jumped by a red clad Houndoom. Immediately, he runs off, touches a crystal, and communicates with a... I don't know how to describe him other than a totally cool-looking Renfair dude hanging out with a fair lady at a castle. His name is Sir Aaron. And Lucario tells him about the armies and how they're going to collide like worlds. It's just a dude in a red mage outfit that he dyed blue. <laughs> right? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. rogue or wizard guy, pick a lane. <laughs> Even though you're clearly a monk. It's also the Pokeball logo on the hat. It's really perfect how much this is. Dude, what what are you cosplaying as? And you expect minutes of sentences to come out of his mouth <laughs> as he describes his obvious outfit. This is like every single person who plays a bard in the Pokemon universe. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. 
as he finishes communicating with them via crystal. Hound Dooms jump Lucario, knocking dust in his eyes, so he closes them. And then he blows up all the Hound Dooms with multiple aura spheres, which is very cool. We cut back to the castle where Her Majesty is next to Sir Aaron and talking about how she's not going to leave to avoid danger. Sir Aaron can't convince her to go, so he takes leave on a Pidgeot, which is really cool until Skarmory's fuck up everything. <laughs> and he has to emergency land as he lands. Lucario catches up to him with its eyes still closed. Sir Aaron goes, oh, why are your eyes closed? And he's like, don't worry about it, master. Uh, what's going on? And he goes, don't call me master anymore. I've abandoned the queen and kingdom. And then he throws a scepter down and imprisons Lucario in it. And Lucario <laughs> just goes, why, master? Why have you betrayed me and left me in the scepter for 1,000 years? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we cut up to... The Tree of Beginning, which looks shroomish, but not like a shroomish. Uh, and it starts to let out a whale, almost like a whale. And the queen <laughs> hears it. ho -Oh then flies up towards a cave inside of the Tree of Beginning and becomes Mew, the famous ability Mew is known for. Ho has never been real. It's always just been a Mew pretending. Stop <laughs> saying my favorite legendaries aren't real. If the fucker Lugia can get a goddamn movie, I swear to God. Right? It's okay, guys. It's all right. We're going to find out much later Lugia was also fake. Look, so, lo so long as it's equal opportunity cucking on favorite legendary birds, I'm cool with it. Well, considering how often we talk about Ash being in a coma, no Pokemon is real. So. <laughs> you make an interesting argument. Look, all I'm saying, Shibuya, is don't start appreciating Max at any point because he'll just devolve into actually having been a ditto this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrifying. <laughs> but it would be funny. Wait a minute. I thought, oh no, my younger brother died. <laughs> May? <Yeah>. Oh no. <laughs> funny thing about this scene, though, with the hoe flying into the cave. During it, a Pidgeot is shown flying away and it's making Pidgeot sounds. When they cut to the inside of the ho lands inside of this cave, inside the tree of beginning, they keep or continue again making Pidgeot sounds for the ho -O? And when it transforms, they stop. I'm like, guys, did you think that was the same bird? Because it was two shots in a row. Like, I could see the U.S. team going, that's still a fucking bird. I'm going to make the bird sound. Or maybe they couldn't get, like, Pidgeot out of the recording booth. Like, they were just like, okay, you're done. Get out. Shoo. The armies clash. Everything starts erupting green because the tree of beginning shoots out, like, green waves of energy. It's it's very cool. It's actually Broly. It's actually it is pretty Broly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Broly was actually Mew the whole time. The army stare in awe as it does this. And then it turns out this is being told through a storybook narration. And the child goes, Mom, is that true? And she goes, No. And we roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of crazy this mom and parent are not characters in this movie after this. This is it. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're a framing device. <laughs> yeah, they're a framing That's device. The best you can hope for. <laughs> It's like if you got an intro to like a 90s kids film that was like, oh, tell me that story again. And the old wise man's like, oh, I've told you that enough. And so, you know, they just aren't in the movie now. <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk about these Pokemon armies for a second. Yeah, let's go with okay. them. Yeah, sure. Be What's because, up? Because, I mean, you know, the idea of a massed army of human and Pokemon is is, is one thing tactically in, in infeasible as it is <laughs> but you know putting a bunch of armor on pokemon to, and sending them to battle that sounds cool which one of these dumb motherfuckers decided to put their weird ass play school armor on a goddamn steelix Look, they need to know Who what side it's on. Time and resources. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I feel like Steelix, Agron, th there's some in there that really did not need it because they're like literally armor plated themselves naturally. And then you put on this like rugby gear that makes them look fucking goofy. <laughs> well, they don't want Steelix to hurt anyone too bad. <laughs> look, look, it's it's either the weird armor or spray painting the logo on the side of the steel. Oh. They really want that. That's the way my brain was going too, but I'm like, wait a minute, this is the legendary pass. They don't even have Pokeballs. 
<laughs> it is interesting that this this does represent a time period that isn't modern day or whoever keeps building all these like base relief and hieroglyph covered stone temples. This is something <laughs> in the middle. Right. And this is also before like Legends Arceus mm-hmm. by significant amounts, I assume. Yeah, it was like a week. <laughs> <laughs> they figure out Pokeballs just a little while later. Uh, Not even. It's just that the people of Hisui really didn't want to share their time. Yeah, it's with different regions. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> this is like one of those, like, they've had fireworks in Asia forever sort of facts where it's just like Hisui had fucking Pokeballs. They didn't share. Well, certainly not. And like all of the regions are very insular. There's no species crossover. The tech doesn't move. <laughs> well, we've never heard of Poke Gear in Kanto. Yeah, no, we're not putting up cell phone towers in your hick town. <laughs> <laughs> Last time we tried, some guy said it was melting their brain and it took down the antenna. That guy was Professor Oak. <laughs> Oh my god, could you imagine the <laughs> Professor Oak origin story where he's like, yeah, I just ended up on a bad side of YouTube's algorithm as a kid and did a lot oh of things god. I regret now. Very distinctly anti-science. Man, wh- which <laughs> EV form happens when you <laughs> evolve it near a 5G tower? <laughs> <laughs> just becomes a phone, literally. <laughs> did the it's- intro of this movie have a space shuttle in it? No. Not the intro. Was it not the intro? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, it's it's a little bit later in the film when they cut to it, you know, getting a little bit ahead of myself. Kid's going to be communicating with the other guy whose name I cannot remember, but should be in my notes. And so they cut to the shuttle for that because shuttles are how you relay signals through space, not satellites. <laughs> mm-hmm. I figured it was just because that's the level of comically rich that this man is. Uh, no, I don't they, doubt they it. did cut to a weird satellite, but there was in, in, in the montage of like then moving toward the modern day. I swear there was an actual space shuttle. OK, there was a lot there. And it's that part of a Pokemon movie where my brain shuts off because they need uh-huh. to describe Pokemon. <laughs> do, do, do you think that the, the, that the astronauts in the Pokemon universe see an alien and point and go, look at that Pokemon? Yes. Yes, I think yeah. they do. No, I think they're constantly on radio silence because if Rayquaza hears them up there, (laughs) he's going to go fucking nuts. (laughs) Pokemon is one of those sci-fi settings where God is like, no, humanity is not allowed to escape Earth. We just don't know because the only enforcer is this screeching lizard. We we don't talk about the failed shuttle launches in the Pokemon universe. They're great tragedies and Rayquaza was there and that's all we need to know. He's always there. All you need to know about exploring space is that eventually Porygon worked. (laughs) Eventually, but then like later Porygons didn't. It's complicated. (laughs) I think that happened sometime around us renaming Asia. Like I can't remember. What was the entry, Bob? China? China exists (laughs) early on in Pokemon. Oh, God. Anyway, we got to get to this. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, there's storybook narration. The mom explains that the tree of beginning made all the armies forget their anger and hate and stop the battle thanks to Sir Aaron going there and stuff. And then we get an intro with a logo. It's kind of cheap looking. Cool 3D scepter shots, though. Pretty neat. The narrator sounds wrong. I don't know if it's the, the yeah. normal no, guy. No, this is the wrong. No, this, is, just, this is the new guy doing the impression that sucks. Yeah, I don't okay. know. It just it's bu- it bugged me a lot. It's just Mike Pollock. I don't know what what else there is. I don't know. Maybe he was just like s- feeling stuffy that day. I. It's not that different to me. <laughs> could, it's, it's one of his one of his nostrils is just completely congested. <laughs> he sounds weirdly high pitch for how he usually does. Like it yes. doesn't sound right. Yeah, something about it's a little off. Anyways, mm-hmm. the gang Ash, May, Brock, Max, who's who's real, all <laughs> are walking towards the castle and a line of people across this bridge. They talk about how they can get their awesome, cool Ren Faire outfits at the castle, which is why they didn't bring any. A bird flies overhead and up to the castle. It is, in fact, uh, Starly, I believe. Taylor. Ah, I'm never going to get the birds. I got the Gen 3 ones for you. Don't worry. We get Thank the Gen you. 5, I'm done. But for here, I got you. I can take over again. I'm like, that's Pitov, and I love him. <laughs> <laughs> Flies up to the castle, lands, and becomes a Pichu. <gasps> Inside of the changing room, 
the Pikachu is hanging out with the main crew. The main crew is looking at outfits. And Pikachu notices the Pichu who's hiding behind a uh, curtain. Just goes, Pichu, Pichu. And then turns into a Trico and freaks out Pikachu. Everyone gets into goofy outfits and then looks at Pikachu menacingly and is like, yeah, we're going to ruin this kid's life. <laughs> and they just strap him down with like a jester outfit. It's really cute, though. I like that Ash has like what you would expect a hawk handler or whatever to have as an outfit, you know, giant gloves for the bird <laughs> to land on and everything and a falcon ear. And then, and then Pikachu's just a jester. And I'm like, there was like a theme you could have had here. <laughs> well, he, he literally also has a swallow at this point. So he literally True. just could have had swallow riding on his arm the entire time. And he chose not to do that. And he, he was gonna, but then the Pokemon company talked to him and pointed out a line in his contract that says only Pikachu. Yeah. We cannot, <laughs> no, sir, have Pikachu stand on your arm and have the juxtaposition of how much this could have been a themed idea right on screen in one image. It's okay. I'm sure Lucario will ride on his arm for him. <laughs> <laughs> I hunger, master. <laughs> I really You're like heavy. how... <laughs> Ash is like, oh, I'm the hero, so I'm going to dress all heroic. And Brock's like, I'm frequently accused of being a sex pest, so I'm going to dress like a Catholic bishop. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Sometimes it's exactly what it says on the label. <laughs> As they all leave the room, Team Rocket sneaks into the changing room and goes, oh, there's, there's, there's going to be Pokemon. Like, Man, we're going to steal the Pokemon, and then, then we can ha, ha, own homes and stop scrounging for food. <laughs> Jesse says, hey, you guys are going to take me on a date. Meowth and James, they freak out. It's funny. We cut to an arena with CG crowds. They look great, right, Bob? Yeah, of course. The queen comes up with a mime junior and commences the ceremony. A song starts. It is so good. It, it is like it, this movie it has an AI buried in it, and it generated this song because it just sounds like a song you would play in a Pokemon movie and could not exist outside of this substance. This movie is the substrate through which this can reach humanity. Important, hard-hitting lyrics like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm undefeatable. Pokemon, advance battle. <laughs> it, it's rough. I had mostly wiped it from my brain. <laughs> I wrote this into my notes. It's important. Uh, we, we get a superimposed graphic of a tournament bracket going on. You know, Ash is involved. Lots of fighting, blah, blah, blah. Ash won it all. Who knew? His final opponent was a Paraguay. <laughs> I mean, he was won a tournament. Right? Like, yeah. that's not something normal for Ash. He's not, not allowed. Yet. Well, it's not normal for Ash when it's the subject of the thing. This was a throwaway montage and not important in the <laughs> context of the film as, as far as it's treating it. No one in the Ren Fair was actually any good at Pokemon battling. Except for this lady at the end, clearly, who would have won if she had taken off her armor and become an important character sooner because her name is Kid. She's very cool. Kid with two Ds. I forgot to mention in the middle of all this, Mew is like impersonating the Mime Jr. up at the uh, seats with the queen and stuff and her assistant. And then it turns into an APOM and comes down onto the field. Brock, Brock hits on Kid and then gets dragged off. Yeah. I, I don't even know why I say these things in the <laughs> movies anymore. It's no, it's just... <laughs> A foregone conclusion. In the throne room, Ash is presented with a guardian staff of Sir Aaron. Ash hears Lucario. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't get over the actual blood of this movie. It's Lucario being betrayed and left in the scepter for 10,000 uh. years. <laughs> that's the, that's the me in the dipshito orb. I'll never fucking forgive them. <laughs> We need Lucario, like, chained up and edgy inside yes. the, the crystal. Yes. The water mode AOP, it. but it's Lucario. Oh, my God. Budokai 3 music is playing. Oh, my God. Uh, you can hear Lucario inside the Zepter. <laughs> Piss for being betrayed and left in there for 10,000 years. Everyone is dancing at the party that is now happening because Ash is holding the Scepter and we're continuing with the ceremony. I need to get it together. Ash uh, summons his Pokemon to join in on the dance. You know, that's 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 cool. Just unleash a bunch of wild animals on this <laughs> right. human party. Yeah. 
<laughs> this kingdom has no security <laughs> whatsoever. No. None. Does any kingdom in Pokemon? I mean, there are cops. That's true. Um, I don't know. Do you recognize N at the end of fifth gen as a sovereign nation or? <laughs> Because they have a security squad for fucking sure. <laughs> it's true. That raises an important question. Are you a regent if you just control a force that can do violence on your behalf? <laughs> this is an important theme to explore in Pokemon. I hope they get around to it. In the Pokemon world, I feel like, yeah. Because depending on which Pokemon you have control over, that's basically a nuke. <laughs> I like that this is... <laughs> The rule of law in the Pokemon universe is the rules of nature and Kenpachi Zaraki or whatever has like the biggest Pokemon and he just commits violence. So we have to give him his own island. I mean, I assume that's basically how it works. Like the governments are made up of interested parties because in a post scarcity economy, like the Pokemon universe, you just have people who like being involved in government bureaucracy do it on their own time. So it's like defunct land. <laughs> 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 anyway uh everyone's dancing at the party pokemon were unleashed somehow this is a disastrous immediately brock is instructed by kid to put his arm around her and he says thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah brock isn't ready for this to be fair this is the first time a woman i think has ever elected to let him touch her so this is a big moment for the guy Yes, and I have a very interesting question to ask, but we're going to wait a little bit later before oh, I no. ask it. Jesse James are dancing and swap partners at the dance. Jesse is picked up by some handsome guy, I suppose, and James is picked up by me, who recognizes him somewhat immediately. And he's like, no, I just have a very similar face to a lot of people, and he keeps pointing his head away while dancing with her. It's really good. Meanwhile, Meowth is hiding under a table eating food and i'm like this this is why meowth is ian from the cu podcast spirit animal <laughs> kid says she's thirsty and brock runs off immediately yelling the lady wants punch <laughs> <laughs> he's really excited to finally have a tall woman just telling him what to do again yes he has so consent happy. he has a dance with a nice lady he, he he doesn't have a child trying to fucking assault him for approaching any female presenting people. This, he, this is his night. He's living it up. This is the peak. <laughs> we locked Max in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough betrayal in this movie locking people in places. We don't need to lock Max up too. Yeah, but Max deserves to be locked in a cage. <laughs> Some might say Lucario's less of a feral animal than Max. <laughs> Kid in another room is clearly working for some rich tech guy who she communicates with with her high-tech Apple VR headset. She ends the call by saying Mew is hanging around and she's going to get it. Meowth heard the whole thing. Munchlax is here in the movie and is eating. So is Max, but no one cares. The parade of Pokemon unleashed by Ash finally <laughs> make their way upstairs to a room with mechanisms for lowering the chandeliers and a bunch of antiques are lining the room. And as I look at this, I'm like, oh, man, this party's going to get crazy. They're going to not use any of those mechanisms. It turns out. <laughs> yeah, I thought for sure the Pokemon were going to like cause a scene and destroy the entire party. But no, they just hang out with the homages to the other movie. <laughs> The, the, this party had already hit maximum levels of chaotic weirdness because it's got Jesse dressed as a woman and James dressed as a man. And that that's just too bizarre for one room to contain. <laughs> it, it just felt a lot like, hey, Chekhov, uh, your gun's on that table. And Chekhov looks over. He goes, you're right. And then just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's... There's a little bit more I need to talk about before I have to ask an important question. Okay, so <clears throat> Mew is hanging out with the parade of Pokemon, you know, that Ash unleashed and uh, transforms into a Pikachu and they all start dancing around. Brock down at the party is left holding the punch looking for Kid and I almost feel bad for him. <laughs> He just has that look of where does she go? And he's just going to spend the rest of this party looking left and then looking right while holding two cups of punch. Aww. Meanwhile, hard shift to a stolen movie. Kid on the ceiling is literally doing the Castle Cagliostro shit. <laughs> yup. 
it is so exact that I'm like, well, at least they're not doing the goofy run thing because kids supposed to be cool. Then Meowth does that bit from Castle of Kaleos, right? I'm like, what's going on, movie? <laughs> Look, we can't make a Pokemon movie without one to one remaking at least one scene from a Ghibli movie. I just, <laughs> going insane. <laughs> I don't know who makes the rules, but we follow them here. <laughs> <laughs> we follow them to our grave. How are they going to do this 23 times in a row? I ask myself. <laughs> We're going to watch the live action movie again, you know, Detective Pikachu. And I'm going to go, oh, this is clearly that other Miyazaki <laughs> film. <laughs> this is a really deep pull. My neighbor, the Yamada as well. <laughs> <laughs> Back at the upstairs dance party next to all those mechanisms no one will touch. Mew turns back into Mew and kid spots them using binoculars. It sends two Weaviles to tag Mew. And I'm like, wow, that is that seems excessive. Like, Weaviles are wicked Pokemon. The thought of sending two of them just to do this is like, you almost know violence is going to break out right? just doing this. Like, enter this crowded room and stick this machine to one of the rarest, most elusive psychic types in history. And yet, she seems surprised when violence does break out, even though she sent two fucking Weaviles. She thought they were well trained. She, get, she gave them sawed off shotguns and went, oh, they ruined the stealth mission. Um, Mew dodges uh, gracefully and the Weaviles uh, start unleashing their ice powers, freezing Munchlax instead of Mew. Pikachu attacks and then the Weaviles freeze all of the party Pokemon. Kid can't see the battle from where she is and wonders why the hell the Weavile are going nuts, which is so obviously her fault. Mew turns into a Meowth next to Meowth. And starts dancing with Team Rocket's mouth. It's just like, I hope you have a plan. <laughs> yeah, the plan is for them to kill you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I think we both know what the plan is here, Meow. <laughs> Max finds the room. Mew transforms and teleports Pikachu and Meowth out of there. On top of the castle, they start falling off. Meowth tells Pikachu to lay off the Poke block as, as he grabs him. And Mew turns into a bird Pokemon and flies away with Pikachu and Meowth to safety. Somewhere in there, there was a really good dance from these two Weaviles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, there's a lot of really good visual stuff, like, in this bit. Ash is bored and looks into the... <laughs> I'm sorry, this isn't a bit. I genuinely find it this funny that Ash is like, oh, I'm so bored at this party. It looks down at his hell scepter that has an imprisoned soul in it. <laughs> and then he hears Lucario, who thinks he's Sir Aaron. Ash strikes the pose of Sir Aaron as a part of the ceremony, and then Lucario escapes. Lucario's like, why did you betray me, Sir Aaron? And the queen... And me, but especially me, and then and then he runs off. <laughs> Fireworks are going off outside, and Lucario has a vision of the past. Sir Aaron taught him how to use the aura. At this point, I start to become skeptical that this is Sean Schemmel voicing Lucario because I'm not used to him doing anything but a Goku voice anymore. It is really weird that this is him. It'd be really funny if they revisited it now and he just sounds like Goku because Shimmel's like, no, I'm not going to try. <laughs> <laughs> not only is it Goku again, but the audio quality is worse than everyone else's because he doesn't. <laughs> hey, it's me. Lucario stumbles into a treasure room after the vision and the gang catches up. Lady Eileen, which is the modern day queen, tries to explain to him that he was betrayed and left to deceptive for deceptive centuries. Now in the throne room, she continues to elaborate on what exactly happened. I was so relieved when she said she was like the descendant of that queen. I was fully ready for, ah, Lucario, you're back. It's me. I was immortal the whole time for some reason. And then and then the tree works in mysterious way. And then something <laughs> happens at the tree and she starts aging and fast forwarding and looks like hyper realistic Akira shit. <sighs> you cut back to the attic and it turns out there was a fucked up portrait of her up there the entire time that we didn't know. Now it's Dorian Gray. Yeah, fucking one of the wee vials freezes and destroys it. <laughs> She's like, <"Nah!" laughs> Brock is still wearing that outfit. Hmm. 
Max shows up and explains that Mew is there. Kid confirms that this is correct. They all look at the the painting of Mew in front of the tree of beginning while everyone says they want to find Mew to get Pikachu and Meowth back. The tree of beginning is right outside because that's where it was in the past. And they decide to go there. But Lady Eileen warns Ash that Mew can look like anything and to be careful. They say, Lucario will be able to see because he can see Aura and he can lead me on the journey, says Ash. And everyone's like, oh, okay, all right. Yeah, this seems like a good plan. And then one of the most like weird bits, amazing bits ever to break out in a Pokemon movie happens. Brock sees Kid in her normal outfit and realizes she's a world-famous athlete and explorer. And he is, in fact, her number one fan. He pulls out a book with pictures of her in it and explains all this stuff about her and then he apologizes for not recognizing her sooner and the whole time he's doing this mime jr has been pantomiming his yes! crying <laughs> bullshit the whole time yes i love mime jr in this movie he's such a funny little guy mm-hmm. i get so much so serotonin good. looking at this man it also <laughs> looks delicious um, like, I know there are Pokemon that are literally ice cream, but this thing looks like it might be the tastiest looking Pokemon. No, this the colors may look appealing, but the texture on a Mime Jr. would probably be god awful. <laughs> you no, don't know. Probably that. be like taffy. <laughs> Man, I'm so hungry. How hungry? <laughs> Get your little circus peanut ass over here. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> This is when I had the epiphany, though, this whole bit. If this character could continue to exist outside of this movie, I bet Brock would just stop harassing every woman in the world to become her number one fan if it was a even vaguely existing long distance relationship. Yeah. <laughs> I think Brock is so committed he would never once flirt again if she would just be like, yeah, we're dating now. <laughs> Like Kid Summers, you've broken all these records and, and had all these like amazing feats in your career. W what are you most proud of? And she's like, well, I've been distracting this one guy named Brock for the last five years, and he has left every other woman on Earth alone. I've saved hundreds of women from potential sexual harassment lawsuits, and I think that's the most impressive feat that I have ever accomplished. You're welcome, ladies. She has her arms out. She's blocking the arrows for all women everywhere. <laughs> noble <laughs> <laughs> but if only she knew she had the button she could hit it at any time but she doesn't know she doesn't know brock's history which i'm surprised that that's allowed i feel like every woman in the poke <laughs> world should know brock's history max just dispenses the papers <laughs> yeah <laughs> hi i'm max and this is paperwork i legally have to give you since you're near him now <laughs> right hi i'm brock and i'm legally required to inform you that <laughs> <laughs> Ash, you really shouldn't travel with this guy. What's happening? Why he introduces himself so fancy with paperwork every time. <laughs> Ash enters the throne room at night. It's dark. Lucario jumps him because, quote, he snuck up on, on me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel terrible. I still remember this because it's an AMV hell. Yeah, it's you the should. only thing from this movie I've seen. Oh you should God. feel so bad. Lucario says he doesn't have any friends and he doesn't want any because he's a Sigma Pokemon. The next day, they're now in a Jeep following Lucario. Lucario is leading them through the fog and stuff. It is cool. They explain that Lucario can guide them through the fog with the ability to detect aura. Ash has the same aura as Sir Aaron and Team Rocket nearly falls out of the trunk when they hit a bump in the road. It is very funny. Do you think that Aaron, like, piped some girl right before he left to do what he did, and he's just Ash's great-great-great-grandfather. <laughs> Probably. Do I think <laughs> Sir Aaron got some? This is now something I'm having to consider. <laughs> if you consider, did that outfit help or hinder that? You also have to consider, does aura control extend to other activities? Because maybe that helps. Yeah, maybe. I don't think we see this dude without his hat on in this movie. <laughs> But he was drawn with it by uh, Ken Sugimori. Yeah. Okay. And I think his hair is wild. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Ken, Ken, sometimes hair is just an explosion on these characters. It's just a comic bow effect. I mean, he seems to be one of the most respected men in the kingdom, so I imagine he wouldn't have that much trouble. 
He's almost got like a what is a Jotaro thing going on with the back of his hat. He does. Yeah, he does. Where in this sketch, <laughs> it looks like it could be his hair, but it's not. Anyway, elsewhere, Pikachu is asleep in a basket of leaves that is clearly inside the tree of beginning as Meow starts messing around with a bunch of toys lying around because I guess in this movie, Mew is like a rich kid. Like that <laughs> Mew is the kid with the Neo Geo. Yeah, they they talk about how the kingdom just gets toys they know Mew will steal. It leaves yeah. Them out. yeah, the queen literally has a conversation at one point saying, yeah, Mew shows up during the festival sometimes and just takes shit. You know, it's fine. We let him. He's a, he's a quirky little guy. We used to have 5G coverage. <laughs> <laughs> used to. You see the tower, like, tilting off to the side of the tree of <laughs> yeah. beginning. It's yeah, about to fall off. The fucking legs are sticking out of the side <laughs> at a weird angle because you just shoved it in a hole. <laughs> Oh, my God. We have a camping scene real quick. What's up? <laughs> you know, that this is why they haven't progressed as much as the city in the last movie. <laughs> Mew keeps taking everything they try and put that yeah, knowledge that's, in. That's really... He's an angry god. Um, Brock makes food for a little camp out sort of thing they're doing. Just a little picnic. Uh, and he's passing it out to everyone until a Bonsley starts eating kids' food. Brock yells at it, and then it starts crying, and Max points out, hey, it's using its attack, fake tears. And then it just goes, uh, and runs off with the food. <laughs> Lucario stops it, saying, don't take food that isn't yours, and gives it a berry instead to eat. Inside the tree, Pikachu wakes up, so Mew and Pikachu start playing. Meowth accidentally falls into the tree, which is a pile of... Bizarre green orbs traveling through a Marvel vs. Capcom 2 loading tube. <laughs> they make it to the top of the tube, and then they look out on the landscape. And ever, Mew's nose looks weird in this scene. It's probably just me, but it looks like it's a Sunday comic nose. Like, it's overly big. Like, when people... I think it was when South Park drew Family Guy, and they made Peter's nose weird. It just reminds me of that. And anyways, it's a beautiful feast at the top of this tree of beginning that is in fact rock caves that is in fact marvel vs. capcom 2's loading screen elsewhere lucario is leading them until they find a spring and everyone's like okay let's get in the spring as may gets out of the truck into her swimsuit bonsley falls off the top of the jeep and onto her head somehow she is not dead <laughs> yeah she's apparently got a really hard head <laughs> That is a rock Pokemon. By all accounts, she should at least be bleeding. <laughs> I mean, at very least, I've played Super Smash Brothers, so I know Bonsley should be really, really heavy based on that. <laughs> but let, let me see. Let me see. Maybe it's not too bad. Yeah, she just got hit on the head with a 33-pound rock. <laughs> that's, that's all. <laughs> She's fine. They sure are taking a lot of breaks on this oh, quest to sure, save Pikachu. They sure are. You, you assume that it's many, many days of travel, which really makes you impressed by Team Rocket not getting food this whole time. <laughs> so she got out of the Jeep. Bonsley lands on her head. She recovers. She goes down to the spring. They have to explain to May that Bonsley's rock-type Pokemon would not like to be inside this spring, and Bonsley freaks out and runs away a bit. Sir Aaron and Lucario hang out at the spring in the past, Soaking their feet. This is a fond memory Lucario has. Ash and Max invite Lucario into the spring, and Lucario goes, mm, and walks off. May <laughs> notices some weird thing up on the side of the cliff, so Ash decides to climb up and pick it up. It seems to be some sort of crystalline flower of some sort. And he falls down into this obviously shallow spring, but he's perfectly fine, thank God. And then May gets upset that he picked the flower. I'm like, that's what he was obviously... Can you not predict Ash? Can you not predict Ash of all people? She did just get hit in the head with 33 pounds of rock. I think she might be <laughs> suffering the effects of a concussion. She can't even <laughs> see straight. That's fair. <laughs> Lucario remembers that this is a time flower, and it lets you see the past. It's very convenient, actually. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chekhov, you left this gun. Can we use this one? <laughs> As they go to replant the flower, Ash sees himself falling into the water in the past. They explain that it probably worked because he has the same aura as Sir Aaron. Ash talks about how he and Pikachu... This is later at night. Ash is talking to the others about how he and Pikachu didn't used to get along. But then a flock of Spearow attacked and Pikachu saved him. Lucario then thinks about Sir Aaron training him to dodge things with aura. Lucario says, all men are the same, and walks off. 
Ash won't stand for this. <laughs> he, won't, he won't stand for Lucario saying all men are the same. And accuses Lucario of betraying the queen. Lucario says Pikachu probably left Ash because he doesn't want Ash for a master. Ash then tackles Lucario and they fall into the water. It really yeah. escalated. There, there was no option but violence after that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Ash has a quota. He's got to tag at least one legendary Pokemon for a movie. Yeah, but this isn't a legendary. Lucario is a basic ass Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> this Lucario is legendary. Legendary, pseudo legendary, or explosion. <laughs> like, he, Lucario questioned how good of friends Ash and Pikachu are. He's lucky there wasn't a knife in his gut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ash later explains Lucario said mean things. <laughs> that, and then I believe it was Max that's saying this, or is it May? It's May. May's like, you also said mean things to Lucario, and Ash goes, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that was me, yeah. Max feeds chocolate to a dog. Yeah, I literally <laughs> screamed, What the fuck? You don't feed chocolate to animals, motherfucker. The, the audience is all in the van screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Lucario thinks chocolate's pretty neat, which I guess is good. At least he enjoyed it before it kills him. <laughs> like all Pokemon, unlike dogs, are immune to chocolate. <laughs> okay. No, because Lucario's like a dog Pokemon. So I think the end of this movie would have been different if somebody had just slapped the chocolate out of Max's hand and dragged him away and given him the talk about how, you know, even like three <laughs> ounces of chocolate is maybe not lethal, but poison. Yeah, yeah. Just so you know, you doomed Lucario right now. And then Max is like, oh my god. And they're like, yeah, you have to live with that now, Max. Because dogs are real in the Pokemon <laughs> universe. And they are also allergic to chocolate and can fly and talk. <laughs> Lucario is a pretty big fan of the chocolate. We cut to Mew and his tree of loot. Pikachu is really bored of hanging out with this rich kid and misses his actual friends. Mew's like, no, no, check this out. It pulls up a shuckle party blower. It yes. is so good. <laughs> oh, it's the best. No, it's, it's really good. But the entire vibe of that sequence of Mew trying to keep Pikachu entertained was just like, Mew's a Twitch streamer. Nobody in chat has talked for 20 minutes. And he's like, I got to go. I got to entertain him. What the fuck? I'm dying. I'm dying. Please, someone <laughs> escape. Let me out. Let me out. Let's get the Atomon. <laughs> It's basically Conan during the writer's strike. He's like, yeah, I'm going to spin this ring. Let's see if we can keep it spinning for long enough to break a record. Okay, you give me the idea of doing Conan spinning the wedding ring, but instead it's just a shuckle spinning on the desk. Yeah! <laughs> That'd be awesome. That'd be so good. But seriously, though, the shuckle party blower, they should make this. This, <laughs> this is so good. When they blow into it, the limbs for the shuckle come out and it goes... It's so good. Anyways... Ash senses Pikachu is up there and sad and wakes up. Well, he's got the aura, so of course. Yes. And that's just something we're going to have to deal with for the next 16 movies. Yes. yes. The next day, Lucario is leading them and finds the place where he was betrayed and left in the staff. There's a time flower that shows Lucario what happened when he was betrayed and left in the staff. Like a cat watching a TV, Lucario starts attacking the phantom images of the army Pokemon. <laughs> it's pretty funny. He starts shooting beams everywhere and everyone's like, oh my god, it's the past, Lucario, stop it! <laughs> Lucario says... <laughs> This is this was my absolute breaking point while watching this movie. I think it was Bob's too. With Lucario explaining all of this to them, goes, he was my master and he betrayed me. <laughs> <laughs> Ash, promise me you won't ever desert Pikachu. And Ash goes, I promise. And I go... Bro, have you not seen that he's been on a journey to find this Pikachu for at least three days now? Do you think, do you really think? This is an entire convoy and expedition with one purpose. They don't even know Meow's there. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do not know. They do not care. It, it's, this is specifically the hunt for Pikachu. But as, you know, Lucario and Ash see eye to eye and they, they have an emotional bond and they have a moment. They sense something, and it's fucking Regirock who just starts wrecking shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so good. Seeing the meme clips, I didn't expect Regirock's appearance to just be that sudden. 
Uh-huh. And then be exactly the clips that I've seen going uh-huh. around for at least two years. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I will fully admit I clapped. I clapped out of my mind because things are finally happening in this movie. I'm, I'm already losing it because of the betrayed line, and then it rolled straight into that moment. I nearly fell out of my chair because the sounds Regirock makes is so top notch, as it just sounds like weird machine sounds for a backing up vehicle. To let you know you are in danger. <laughs> it's weird machine sounds combined with like the ooh, 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 which I, yes. I don't think any human can produce. If you can do Regirox noises, no, the fuck you can't. That's a talent. <laughs> so good. This took me completely out of my train of thought of the one time I saw this movie airing on Cartoon Network years ago. I could have sworn it was Ash getting isekai into the past to help fix Aaron and Lucario's relationship. And learning that this movie was not that was throwing me off, and then Red Rock showed up, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I gotta pay attention now. F- shit. <laughs> you have to build all mental connections out from this moment now. Red Rock. <laughs> yeah, this is the new formative point of this entire movie, is fucking Red Rock. Uh, Regirock demands that everyone identify it as a real threat by making these sounds and shooting lasers and wrecking stuff. So they all just run. Yeah, doesn't it destroy their Humvee? Yeah, yes. I, like from this moment on, and I know it happened here because I could call it from this moment. Regirock is this movie's Mr. X. <laughs> I want the Resident Evil 2 remake mod that just puts in Regirock going gung, 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 this is if Mr. X, Nemesis, and I don't, I don't know who else, the, the chainsaw guy from 4 mm-hmm. w- were just homies and called each other up and went, we got bitches on the property. Get them. <laughs> this is their guard dog. Yeah. Lady Eileen is worried, and she should be. Regirock is awake. <laughs> she could hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt it. Do you hear those sounds? <laughs> it doesn't matter how many days they drove for. That thing is like several bombs going off. <laughs> Every TV and radio in that country just plays that sound whenever he makes it. <laughs> Base boosted Regirock would be the funniest shit imaginable. Like, it's on the Richter scale how loud it is. Yes. Lucario believes that Regirock is on the lookout for intruders to protect the tree of beginning. That's a pretty good theory. It is thusly Muse Bouncer. They make their way inside, and uh, the, inside the tree of beginning has some real ending of Scarlet and Violet vibes. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is dope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I literally yeah. said it, it felt like Area Zero. We have a bunch of Pokemon here, which I will attempt to name. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I think all these are right. Lilibs, Cradillies, or Cradillies. I don't know how it's actually said. Nidorinos, Rinas, uh, Lidibas, Staravias, Armaldo. Yeah! <laughs> I was like, every the, the best part about Armaldo, every time his name pops in my head, I go, <laughs> that cannot be his name. And I look it up just to double check myself before I say it out loud because Armaldo should not be the name of a Pokemon. That should be the name of a dude. <laughs> No, yeah. it's, it's funny. I shout out to Armaldo. Love you, little man. Armaldo and his evolution, Eric Andre. Um, <laughs> kid, once inside of here, is like, yeah, we should we should scope all this out. One second, and she has a snake that is segmented that breaks into different drones with like their own propulsion and stuff. It's so insane. I'm like, oh my god, she really is working for like the world's richest man. Yeah, nuts. Anyways, Team Rocket shows up. Jess goes, I'm absolutely giddy. And James goes, yes, you're, you're right, Jess. I'm having the time of my life, too. It's a blast. An explosion goes off. Regirock comes out and starts making the sounds again. <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere, Registeel starts smashing drones with its lasers because they're trying to drill the crystals. It's absolutely madness going on. Science Old Man is doing some analysis in his tokyo lair i don't i don't he's somewhere else i don't it's unclear where and he's realizing the whole tree is alive unlike a normal tree well (laughs) this one has veins made of crystal also it's a cave they make a thing of talking about how this is a mountain and not a tree even though it looks like a tree tree of beginning is in fact a rock formation and they call it a tree but it's not a tree (laughs) they did make a point of saying it's a rock, but we call it the Tree of Beginnings, because look at it. It's pretty cool. It's some it's some real secret of mana vibes. 
So are all the branches and stuff plants, or are those also rock? Are we inside a giant Bonsley? You know, the questions only get weirder as we continue. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, <laughs> no, clearly this is a giant Reggie rock. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, you, you just hear from the earth. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh no, it's waking up. Summon the Eva unit. <laughs> Ash runs out of the cave to see how far up the tree they are and starts yelling to Pikachu, who wakes up and runs over to look at Ash. And then Reggie Ice shows up and just goes, Reggie Ice, Reggie Ice, Reggie Ice. Lesser <laughs> <laughs> so beeps good. Ash. I did not realize contextually these moments would be so infinitely funnier than just seeing the clips isolated. Yeah, I thought this was going to be in the series and we wouldn't just be assaulted by it in a movie. <laughs> right. I had no idea these were movie clips because this movie's kind of low budget. But like, this is insane. It's just busting loose every second. Anyways. Reggie Ice tries to laser beam Ash after making that amazing sound. Lucario tries to defend him from Reggie Ice, and then they run. This is so great. Team Rocket gets chased out of a hole in a cave by Reggie Rock and Reggie Ice, who start blasting. Eventually, the crew comes across a narrow rock bridge and runs across it very fast before Lucario destroys it behind them, sealing the Reggies on the other side. They seemingly are safe. We get a shot that apparently these crystals all throughout the tree of beginning are in fact consuming the drones. And um, I guess we got to talk about it. Um, then they become a molten cradley and eat Jesse. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then they become a molten Amistar and eat James. <laughs> it's fucked up, too. It, yeah. it is, but, yeah. you know, as soon as they said the tree's alive and I see blobs flying around the veins, I'm like, white blood cells, let's go. And then he says it and I'm like, yeah, no shit. You you sure did telegraph that. <laughs> Chekhov's gun was on the table and you grabbed it without hesitation. Shibuya's just like, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, let's go! <laughs> yeah, and hey, fun fact, the only time we see Kabuto in this movie is as a fucking glob. I'm so mad. <laughs> because you get Omni and Amistar, and I'm like, where the fuck is my guy? Where's my yeah. little man? Mm -hmm. yeah. He's nowhere. <laughs> I, I think it's James that starts this thing where like, oh no, I'm being eaten by a red jelly. I'd better pick one Pokemon to, to survive and say goodbye to as I'm digesting. I think that's yes. his only yeah. other Pokemon at this point, though. It's so crazy. Oh, oh. Yeah, this movie, everyone just starts, anytime they're getting eaten, they summon their Pokemon to just say goodbye. And I'm like, wow, I thought the last movie was a horror movie for Pokemon. <laughs> Jesus. Right. It's the fact that the Pokemon won't be attacked because the tree doesn't see them as a threat, but also the fact that you really insist on giving this much trauma to your Pokemon as you're dying. Thanks. Way to go, kid. Yeah, at least they escape and they're not, you know, betrayed and left inside the Pokeball for thousands of years. Yeah, because uh, they, they, they get eaten, with their, they get eaten uh -oh. with their clothes and all so that the Pokeball is gone with what, whatever they are. So they could be dead, too. Yeah, but Wobbuffet is, is stuck in the glob. Jesse didn't even have the decency to let him out. Oh, Maybe no, Wobbuffet's still in the trunk. <laughs> Wait, I, when I it exploded, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not good. Um, <laughs> Maybe Wobbuffet's using that shuckle party blower over with Mew, because Mew was just like, you're a funny guy. I think you can hang out. <laughs> the gang starts freaking out over Jesse and James being eaten. But then the Reggies appear behind them and Lucario tries to blast them away. Kids start sending footage to the old man scientist, whose name is Banks, by the way. My notes now say this. And he says, they're like white blood cells, like Shibuya just said. So it thinks we're some kind of disease. I believe it was kids saying this. And then Ash, for some reason, or Max goes, speak for yourself. And I'm like, damn, rude. I think it Fuck. was Max, because Max, <laughs> Max has made a point of being, like, incredibly savage in this movie. Yeah, I was going to say, he's pretty fucking savage. I don't know what his deal is. So, how many of these Pokemon movies are going to, like, revolve around the defense system? I think so far, I think we're at half. Half of these have involved <laughs> the defense system in some form. You have to, like, not make it anyone specifically's fault, you know? It, it helps to broaden the blame and make it a system that's a problem. Because Pokemon's it, all about taking down the system. Yeah, we can't get to the end of this movie and, like, kill Mew. <laughs> get revenge. Gives Pikachu the handgun. I mean, couldn't we, though? 
<laughs> Agro, are you telling me you want a Pokemon movie to copy The Last of Us 2 instead of Ghibli? <laughs> Is that what you want? Look, people mm. die in Ghibli movies all the time. Yes, but you want a revenge plot is what I'm specifically saying. <laughs> Actually, I, I think an ounce of prevention might have been worth mm -hmm. more than a pound of cure in this case, but <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> the molten forms try to eat Lucario, but then they stop. Kid says, I guess Pokemon aren't considered dangerous before getting lasered by Regirock. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Ash tries to defend against the Regis with Corfish and Grovile. Th then they run. <laughs> They should have, like, goaded them into fusing into Regigigas, which is useless. <laughs> <laughs> slow start lasts the entire back half of the movie. <laughs> yeah, slow, slow start doesn't kick in until the credit. Uh, yeah, they, they're going to get all the way back down to, like, the second floor, and that's when Regigigas finally gets to fucking move. He just crashes through the ceiling. They're like, oh, shit. <laughs> So there's a bunch of running through holes and stuff. Main gang and Pikachu and Mew and Mouth, and they're all running through these caves. Molten forms fly past Pikachu, Mew, and Meowth. Brock and May are eaten by the molten forms and summon all their Pokemon to also say goodbye to them. Kid says, this is bad, to which I say, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, sometimes you're lost for words. Pikachu yells and Ash runs off on his own towards the yell. They're across a chasm from each other with crystal branches being the only connection. Ash tries to get across but is blown off by the tumultuous winds. That doesn't stop him from trying more. And as soon as he gets his footing, he keeps running across these crystal branches on angles that look like the Sonic CD intro almost. <laughs> Grovile, Corfish. And Lucario can do nothing but watch. Pikachu is blown off the branch and Ash leaps to grab him and then realizes, wait a minute, I don't have a plan now that I'm holding him and starts to plummet towards his death. Luckily, though, Kid saves him with a hook shot because she had the hook shot in the earlier scene because we needed to do the Castle Cagliostro thing because they're just not going to stop picking at that part of my brain. Mew and the whole crew gather around Ash and Kid. Reggie Ice shows up beeping at him <laughs> aggressively. <laughs> they run away into a chamber full of crystals that has direct sunlight coming in from above. Registeel grabs Lucario and then Molten Forms eat all of the main human cast. None of the Pokemon try to save anyone from the Molten Forms. <laughs> Not one. Didn't they try and pull until, Ash? No, Ash's Pokemon until did. <laughs> Ash is eaten. And proving that all other Pokemon hate their masters. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're just not as well trained as Ash's elite Pokemon. <laughs> oh, okay. He's that good of a trainer. It's not they all really do hate everyone else. <laughs> Mew picks up Ash's hate. Pikachu gets upset. Mew starts to glow green, lighting up all the crystals in a green glow. And then the entire tree of beginning, the humans are all returned to where they were. Why do you think we were set free, they ask. Because Mew realized that Kiwing is Wog. <laughs> this is the realization that Mew only has after seeing the, what, 10th human consumed by the molten forms that all these Pokemon said. Yeah, yeah, so it's unclear if they were dead and brought back to life or if they were in the middle of a digestion process. They were inside of the loading tunnels <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there was not a single shot uh, of it just... was instrumentality right <laughs> right yeah <laughs> we didn't get a single shot of them actually in the tunnels like now mm -hmm. we just did the implication that maybe they're probably in there probably Mew starts shutting down for some reason. It's getting an insane temperature. All the crystals start turning molten and bubbling like tar and then turning into dust it is screwed up looking. The immune system made the tree go into shock and all the energy is going backwards. <laughs> Which I love when things are that simplified where they're just like, there's a backflow on this tree now. <laughs> <laughs> the, Look, the tree gave itself cancer. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I was like, oh, I should stop killing. Oh, no, I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> the dust like... <laughs> <laughs> the dust like miasma starts pouring out of the crystal next to Lady Eileen even. Mew shows them a chamber and that has the gloves of Sir Aaron and he seems to be <laughs> well betrayed possibly and left inside this crystal for centuries. <laughs> 
<laughs> and Mew's like, I demand blood sacrifice. Yeah, that's basically what's happening here. <laughs> they wonder why he's there, but luckily there's a time flower to do a remember me segment. <laughs> yeah. Sir Aaron gave Mew, who is one with the tree, his aura to protect the people. Lucario realizes that he now can stop the self-destruct if he sacrifices himself. Ash is going to help, so he puts on the gloves. He uses his aura with Lucario to power Mew to juice up the tree. And then Lucario shoves him away and says... Leave the rest to me, Ash. The aura is with me. And that was the one line in the whole movie that sounded like Sean Schemmel. And then he, like, puts two fingers on his forehead and teleports to King Kai's planet with <laughs> Mew. <laughs> Everything is fine now. The trees restore. Mew is better. Kid has to explain to the to Banks that tourism is really not a good plan for this tree. <laughs> we should yeah. probably just not talk about it. Lucario is pulsing and eating it on the ground. Then he sees another Remember Me tape. Sir Aaron talks as he dies to Lucario, who oh can't God. see him and is nowhere near him, and explains that he had to do this, and he apologizes for making Lucario the sad. <laughs> I had to trap you in that crystal in my staff to prevent you from coming here and being trapped in this crystal. Hopefully, we'll be together again some... You are the dumbest motherfucker <laughs> in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lucario is sad and Ash tells him he proved himself then he turns into sparkles like Kyrie Kingdom Hearts <laughs> the crew leaves and Ash has to explain to Max that Lucario had to go be with a friend God. you know somewhere upstate Brock says it's hard to believe that Lucario is gone and Ash goes no it's aura is with me and epic music starts playing and then the subtitle says Eric Stewart's we will meet again plays and I'm like wait Eric what? Stewart Eric Stewart and then Bob goes that's Brock that, that <laughs> is Brock, it and it's James Brock and James and Squirtle yeah, yeah. Yep. and I'm like what the hell is going on with this and movie? I pointed out that this song sucks oh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah he cannot sing <laughs> Yeah, it's bad. No, no uh, surprise, though. There are a ton of shots in the ending. You never know which one of these movies is going to have a ton of shots and none of them have, like, impact. Or, like, it's going to be one of those where there's a ton of shots and then one of them stabs you. Most of these will, will not be described. But one of them is the main cast riding in, like, a cable car down a thing. What, what do they call those again? We actually couldn't remember the thing. A funicular know. tram? Sure. Yes, that. Anyway. <laughs> And then they see Kid leaving in her Jeep and Brock has a meltdown inside of the car <laughs> that you can't hear because all you're hearing is the music and everyone else in the car with him is just staring. <laughs> yeah, they don't want any of that that's going on. He's like, I have to go back to my ways again. <laughs> she could have changed me. <laughs> They show Kid now at a completely different location because it's, in fact, the edge of the rock spire area from the Jirachi movie. And the couple from that movie are farming on the edge of it. I lost my shit when I recognized, uh, and I quote, the great douche and his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pause and I had to rewind and I had to be like, that looks like it. But I, oh, my God, the purple hair, it's them. Yeah, I was like, wait, that's, oh my God, but and then I had to back up to show Bob because I'm like, I cannot believe this movie's just inserting this shot. Because if you recall in the other movie we watched, they had the shot of the guy from Pokemon 2000, I think, the yeah. second movie, going to prison, just in prison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the same deal, just even more insane of like, they're farming, by the way. They're, they're doing great. Their hippie commune's going great. I'm happy to keep an eye out for this section for Kid later. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we need to know what's up with Kid. Lucario and Sir Aaron are in a fog dimension now that has the castle and Sir Aaron tries chocolate. That's the end of the movie, baby! We made it! <laughs> yes. Dimension. Much like how Vegeta sent all those guys to another dimension. Mm -hmm. Much like how the Shadow Realm is totally another dimension. Yes. Much like how when Yugi was dueling Pandora, it was like those shadow buzz saws, if they touch your legs, will send you to the Shadow Realm. <laughs> they totally won't bisect you and you bleed out on this floor. I think they were dark discs, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot like all of 
those, yes. <laughs> it's, it's like how when, when Yugi and Kaiba were tag team dueling on the top of a building with something <laughs> on the glass. It's like you're going to fall and you're going to go but through into a this portal, portal to the shadow realm. You're not going <laughs> to fall and break your neck and die. You won't just fall 60 stories and splatter <laughs> in this hotel lobby. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> What happened to Lucario? He definitely wasn't bisected. <laughs> <laughs> he got sent to the portrait dimension because he and Aaron got put in the same portrait together. And it's oh, that's, neat. That's, and we don't think neat. about anything else. This does raise an interesting question that apparently humans and Pokemon have a shared afterlife. Yeah, I don't. Only ones that can talk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, so wait, did that qualify Lucario to go to human hell? Yes. Interesting. So it's going to be like him and Meowth and that one haunter, and that's it. We're going to have like a, a, an animated film that's just all other Meowths go to hell. <laughs> 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 one Meowth goes to heaven, and that is a movie poster for a movie 10 years from now. <laughs> He's just doing the sassy, like, rant Sona pose. <laughs> yes. But we got to get to our world famous Poke segments. But before we do that, did you know you can get access to Pokemon Go to the movies a full month early mm-hmm. or roughly a month early? Uh, yes, it's true. You can go to patreon.com slash GB podcast, get access to this and upwards of 70 movie commentary tracks and exclusive reviews for Curse Content Committee and Blessed Blunt and Blub. We just did a commentary track and review for Warriors of Virtue. And because this comes out a month late, you're going to go, no, you did that a month ago. Well, we haven't done anything else since, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, you little shit. Anyways, you can go get that for only $5. It's a fantastic deal, and it helps us produce content like this because all of our hosts are fairly and equally paid. That is patreon.com slash Podcast. Let's get into our segments, though. We need to rate this movie on the various axes that we do, starting with the whimsy meter. Ladies and gentlemen, how whimsical is this movie? We will start this time. I almost said week. We don't record this weekly. With (laughs) Shibuya Gato. Shibuya Gato. How whimsical is this film? Well... Considering the fact that this movie addresses, you know, a war that'll decimate a kingdom, being betrayed and put in the staff for a thousand years, (laughs) death, really not super whimsical in the grand scheme of things. Like, there's a brief bit of whimsy with Mew blowing in the shuckle party blower. It's very cute, (laughs) but I'm so proud of Pokemon. This is the first movie that doesn't have an obligatory flying sequence. That's true. Yeah, so that brings the whimsy down a little bit more. I'm probably going to give this a 2 out of 10. Okay. Next, we're heading to Chris. Chris, what do you think? I'm going to give this a 10 on the whimsy meter, and I'll (laughs) tell you why. Because this is basically a Pokemon version of a Ghibli movie, and nobody would ever say (laughs) one of those isn't whimsy, no matter how many people get pushed through a giant wheat thresher in it. (laughs) I have to go next. Um... So this has a lot of whimsical things. I I think, you know, Castle in the Fog, uh, Important Kingdom stuff. People get dressed up to go to the dance and they have their Ren Fair sort of thing. There's a lot of fun whimsy in this. And then there's, you know, Mr. X with the wrenches. (laughs) I think it balances out pretty well. As Shibuya points out, we don't have the, oh my God, we're flying. It's so amazing. Isn't flight amazing? Imagine you were flying eight-year-old scene. Uh, That's not in this. So I'm still going to give this a pretty high score because the power is yours. As Lucario said to Ash, having the aura now canonically for the rest of these films. I'm going to give this an eight. Uh, Dr. Agro, where are you sitting on this? Oh, yeah. We, we, we've got a magical kingdom. We've got wizard betrayal, uh, like color-coded <laughs> armies. Mew's got a secret garden. This is, this is whimsical coming out of its ass. I'll tell you what's not whimsical, though. Uh-huh. Incredibly garish CG crowd shots. That's going to bring yeah. that down yeah. to like a nine. Yeah, that, that is true. Those crowds were pretty embarrassing. I liked them because they looked so bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> the crowds were so high frame rate that they just looked horrible. <laughs> I'm like, guys, it's two shots. It's a movie. Just like pan a watercolor or some shit. For that first bit, my eyes were already glazing over when there weren't Pokemon on screen. And then you give me the crowd shots and I'm just associating to protect myself. <laughs> 
you're like, oh man, this song is so good. Oh, no, no, Pokemon Battle Adventure Next Generation. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> yes, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, Bob, what are you thinking? I definitely side more with Shibuya here because they literally have the main cast melt in this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is all the other whimsical stuff, though, so it, I'm going to have it sit at a five. <laughs> You know, I just like to think of the main cast melting as the sort of, like, horse drowning in a swamp scene for this right? movie. They did melt in a very whimsical manner. Yeah, they're just, like, yelling at Ash, No, Ash, you have to care, as he sinks <laughs> into the swamp. Look, there were five horse drowndings in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man! Could you imagine there were five horse drownings in the never-ending story? <laughs> I would be like, time for my annual watch of the never-ending story. The film that got away with drowning five horses. <laughs> now imagine five horses had to watch five different children die and each horse was traumatized for the rest of its life and we never addressed that. That's not very whimsical of you. And then we drown the horses. <laughs> <And> then we drown. <laughs> <laughs> No, no joke, though. I hope there is a movie where Ash drowns in a swamp. <laughs> I feel like that's got to happen eventually. I feel like it's probably going to be the Zarud movie because that's a jungle right. setting, right? It, it does feel inevitable. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we went to the crystal sky pillars that are in Dark Souls in this movie. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait for the next movie when Ash stumbles into a solid wall and goes through and has to go down the fucking roots <laughs> to the bottom of the tree. <laughs> Well, we're moving on to our next segment, which is the Dex Check. How good is the Pokecast this time? Oh, God. Oh, no. I forgot about the part where I have to read them all. <laughs> <laughs> Get to work. Okay. Cut to Dan drowning in the swamp of Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dan, you have to stop reading. You'll dry. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> For Pokemon debuts, this movie has Lucario, Bonsley, Weavile, Mime Jr., Reggie Rock, and Reggie Ice. Why is Registeel not listed here? Feel free to let us know if you're smarter than us. Here we go. Pikachu, Meowth, Wobbuffet, Chimicho, Fanfeef, Swello, Grovile, Corfish, Combuskin, Munchlax, Squirrel, Fortress, Mukkib, Cagnia, Pidgeot, Mime Jr. We Well, technically Pidgeot didn't... Well, Pidgeot did. Yeah. ho oh didn't. Sorry. Oh, man, does this not list? Anyways, Mime Junior, <laughs> Refile, Agrod, Breloom, Hitmonlee, Mischievous, Ninetales, Tropius, Lucario, Mio, Regirock, Reggie Ice, Registeel, Bonsley, Spiro, Aerodactyle, Laron, Agron, Blastoise, Charizard, Lilip, Cradley, Armoldo, Houndoom, Ladybug, Lydion, Nidoran, Nidoran again, Nidoking, King, Oddish, Omnite, Amastar, Pidgey, Pidgeotto, Renicate, Rhyhorn, Rhydon, Sandshrew, Skarmory, Swablu, Altaria, Stantler, Onyx, Steelix, Tyranitar, Yanba, <laughs> Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres. I appreciate ordering those in the Uno, Dos, Tres. Raikou, Entei, Suicune, which there's also a toy Suicune in the antique uh, attic, which I yep. meant to mention. It was very cool. It's like one of those toy horses for kids. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was cute. Ho oh. Mm. Rayquaza, Nosepass, Lunatone, Vulpix, Ninetales, Venonaut, Venomouth, Ferris. Do you think my co-hosts just go and get a drink during this segment? Like Chris and Agro are just like, okay, we got time. I start I start disassociating. <laughs> Don't worry, the audience is there too. Sandshrew, Sandslash, Bellsprout, Victory Bell, Omastar, Omni, Kabuto, Kabutops, Aerodactyle, again, Anorith, Lilip, Cradley, Armaldo. Oh my god, it lists them separately for the intro. I'm fucking dead. Zangoose, Ditto, <laughs> Relicant, Star You, Starmie, Slowpoke, Slowbro, Slow King, Shuckle, Duskull, Dusclops, Metatype, Metacham, Mankey, Primeape, Wooper, Quagsire, Magnemite, Magneton, Electrike, Heracross, Tropius, Snow Runt, Glally, Jinx, Psyduck, Golduck, Elekid, Electabuzz, Farfetch'd, Clampearl, Huntail, <sighs> Gorbis, Venonat, Venomoth, Roselia, Tentacruel, Tentacruel, Natu, Zatu, Geodude, Graveler, Golem, Cubone, Marowak, Mareep, Flaffy, and Feroz, Pidgey, Pidgeotto, Yanma, and Chris, what did you fucking think? <laughs> 
Uh, before that, I do have an update. So apparently Registeel showed up briefly in the opening sequence for Destiny Deoxys, and that's why it's not counted as its first appearance here. <laughs> cool. Uh, I'm going to be real. I barely remembered there were Pokemon in this movie other than the Regis and, like, the main ones. So I'm going to give this, like, a three. Next is me. This movie could have had half as many good Pokemon in it. And I'll probably still give it at least a nine because the Reggies are so incredible here. They are outrageously amazing. They are beyond comparison. Can, can you tell that I basically never played Gen 4? <laughs> well, they're Gen 3 Pokemon. Only Reggie Geysis is Gen 4, which I was surprised when I found out later. Um, there's an energy to the Reggies in this that seem like they're a safety protection from edged weapons tutorial. <laughs> like, this is the fictionalized movie version of, look out for Pokemon. They'll come for you. <laughs> I do remember screaming, there's no tall grass when <laughs> when Regirock showed up. <laughs> this movie is why they made Legends Arceus. <laughs> It's just like, no, the Pokemon are dangerous. Everyone's afraid. This is just a Pokemon trainer with a Wisconsin accent. I ain't giving you this Registeel, man. I paid good money for it. <laughs> <laughs> gung, 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 gung. <laughs> I think it's amazing. I think it's a 10. I wish every movie had a cast as good as this. I actually loved the cast long before we got to the Reggies. And when it hit the Reggies, it was just locked in at that 10. There are some really good things. Even I really enjoyed the Weavile presence in this film. We're going to move on to Agro, though. Hey, Agro, what do you oh, think? Oh, I'm more on Chris's side with this one. There's, It's not a super great lineup, and half of the really good ones are just Mew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and not even like the cool Mew that everyone likes, this new dick Mew that steals toys from kids. <laughs> This Mew does suck, just so we're clear. <laughs> this is a <laughs> shitty Mew. <laughs> it is always unbelievably weird when a legendary pops up and someone goes, look, A. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And I'm like, aren't there supposed to be one? <laughs> I'm also really against this Mew just because he was fucking cruel to Shibuya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Reggies really do a lot of heavy lifting to pull this list up to a five. Bob, what do you think? <laughs> They're two Weavile Man characters in <laughs> Mistrevious shows up. It's a 10. <laughs> Shibuya, what do you think? What's your dex check coming in at? I think for being a Gen 3 slash Gen 4 movie, the variety of Mons is like shockingly good. And the, the Tree of Beginnings literally just being fossil Pokemon. Nice surprise. Pretty fun to just see Aerodactyl and Cradilly and fucking Armaldo, but Ho is fake and there was no Kabuto. It's a six out of ten. <laughs> yeah, I cannot believe they pulled that shit with Ho. -Ho. I was like, oh, I'm so happy for Shibuya that it turned into Mew. And I'm like, okay, so firstly, I'm pissed that you're doing my homeboy so dirty like that. Secondly, very, very pissed that um, that's not Mew's thing. What are you fucking doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> and then and <laughs> it was just a super ditto. <laughs> And then it wasn't actually a ho -oh, it was a Stantler. <laughs> <laughs> Stantler can't do that! <laughs> no, it, like, it used metronome. Make no mistake, <laughs> if, if a Stantler ever ruins my life the way Mew did in this movie, I will be at the Pokemon Company International Headquarters banging on the door going, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Let me in. Just want to talk, and you hear a gun cock. <laughs> Come on, you're not That's being rational. That's actually a pretty good segue. <laughs> yeah, it is. Next up, the gun check. Could this movie have been better solved with a gun? Ooh, you know, we try to keep it a reasonable gun, right? Like a handgun and not a rail cannon. Yeah, like man portable small arms. Right, right, not right. The, not the sniper rifle that the Ava had when it had to kill the, the morphing angel. <laughs> right, because that could solve this movie. I don't know about a handgun solving this film. I can't figure out a scenario for that. I don't think we have any, like, metrics on how effective small arms fire would be against, like, Regirock. Or, or nerf armor. It's a rock. Oh I think that's the metric is what happens if you shoot a bullet at a massive wall of rock? Who wins? I think it's the rock. Yeah, yeah. it's just going to ricochet and shoot you. 
Hmm. So yeah, I'm coming in at no. I just cannot envision the scenario where this is going to handily solve the problem. Agro, where do you come in on this? I'm a hundred percent yes on this one. Kid Summers on the roof with the scoped rifle looking into that <laughs> attic. Take the fucking shot. She didn't have a clear angle, but maybe. Oh, no, we're talking about Pikachu scoping and shooting Kid. <laughs> <laughs> that solves the problem. She just, did, like, leave the Weavile's at home, bring the Barret, take that fucking Mew <laughs> out. <laughs> we, wanted, we got the Mew dead. That's what we wanted, right? That's it. Whole problem is solved. <laughs> I mean, then we have a Lucario that's jilted at humanity. And there's no redemption arc for that. There's no resolution. Yeah, he remains marketable forever. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he also gets to live in this scenario. Also, he doesn't awaken the power of aura within Ash, which is just, I don't need this crazy ass motherfucker resenganing legendaries left and right. I didn't expect there to be a weird Jinkaria-esque element that will just hang over the rest of the Pokemon movies in my brain. Yeah, we all, from now on, have to consider Ash is holding back. That's why he's not using the aura to destroy this man. <laughs> we have to consider that later on, when he gets his Greninja to Poke evolve into a totally unique form just for him, that that must be a reflection of his aura power. Oh. That's true. There's also the fact that in classic shonen power scaling, when someone's gone as far as they can go, what do you do? Transformation. His aura is just that. He's just going <laughs> Super Saiyan. I want to see Mystic Ash. <laughs> but more than that, I want to hear Bob's opinion on the gun check. Bob, can <laughs> Meows mm -hmm, use a handgun? I think he could. I don't know if Meowth is ready to kill again. <laughs> Are you kidding? I think Meowth is the Pokemon who's most ready to take the shot. I do not think Meowth can pull a trigger with his giant fucking ping pong ball fingers. Yeah, but he does have the extendable nail. claws. Mm. Ooh. Mm. That's true. And they are strong because they can do Pokemon attacks. And Pokemon or attacks are strong. His tail. Oh. He could just unfurl his tail and pull it as well. All right. So I think that he can take the sneak shot at Mew while he's not looking. Now, will that kill Mew? I don't know. I really like that between my theory on Agro's opinion and then Bob's theory crafting here, we have two Pokemon with guns in this one room and Max comes in and they just toss them out the window. <laughs> yeah. The humans must never know. And Pikachu's like, uh, Pika. And then Meow's like, yeah, uh, Pika. <laughs> <laughs> So is it a yes? I guess it's a yes. Okay. All right. That's all right. We're gonna head to Shibuya. <laughs> of course, this, this is the assumption that Meowth will just kill Mew because of the even thought of being transported away with them. Yeah, Mew's like, I'm you. And he's like, No, you aren't. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, Mew, I feel like it's a psychic Pokemon. It would sense it. It would use protect and, and just, you know, get the fuck out of there. It would teleport. <laughs> the Reggies would shake it off and then just rip you in half. Mm -hmm. the, the tree cells later on in the movie are just globs that would absorb bullets. And there's nothing you can do about it. I don't think uh, any kind of firearms could solve this just because of the nature of firearms. Unless you have it like directly a centimeter away from Mew's head. It's not dying. Yeah. And then, and then you know whatever tried to shoot Mew to death will just get teleported outside several stories up and dropped. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Mew doesn't even need to try to kill. Totally accustomed to it by now. Yeah, for Mew, <laughs> killing's just like breathing. Mm -hmm. So Shibuya, you going no with me? I'm going no. Okay, Chris, you got to be our tiebreaker. No. Oh, okay, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was fast. We now move on to the most valued Pokemon segment. Because I assumed that Grizz was not going to elaborate. It, there was nothing to shoot. <laughs> Mew is the first psychic Pokemon. You think Mew isn't constantly surrounded with a skin-tight AT field? A gun isn't going to do shit. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, too. Anyways, yeah. most valued Pokemon segment, MVP. Man, Aggro gets to choose first. 
Uh, that's uh, Aaron's Pidgeot. Hands down. It gets Betrayal Wizard where he needs to be under constant assault <laughs> from flocks of Skarmory and other anti-air fire from this army of nerf larpers. Never complains, never dodges, doesn't even get like a cool line or a send off. He's just, <laughs> he is a warrior for the working day and he makes this whole story happen. Our unsung hero. Bob. It's Grovile. Okay, why is that? Every time we see Grovile and Corfish together, Grovile <laughs> is carrying Corfish. Oh, yeah. To each new segment. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. He helps so much. A Shibuya, what are you thinking? I'm going to argue Corfish because at that point in the movie, you're dealing with, you know, these Pokemon are experiencing emotional trauma watching their trainers die. They are having to run from the tree's defenses. They're having to run from the Reggies who are out to get their asses. And then Corfish, hero that he is, is being carried by Grovile. And then when he is running, he's going, Kurfu, 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 and he's lifting my spirits. That makes him the MVP for me. <laughs> Fair enough. Chris? I'm going to give it to Bonsley. <laughs> <laughs> because every time the, the voice actor barely tried to do a Pokemon voice to say Bonsley, the movie <laughs> just lit up for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you get it. Pokemon can be so powerful. They are capable of so many things. But one Pokemon in this movie single-handedly did something I had never seen before. By itself, it sounded the era of a genre shift to horror movie. I'm giving it to Regirock. Yeah! <laughs> Regirock is so amazing in this film. I did not know all of those clips came from this movie absolutely stellar in this the other two reggies are there but they are not the opening salvo they'll never be him yes they don't live up to regirock and who could frankly right after this it's like i'm not scared of anything <laughs> <laughs> uh except regirock again <laughs> oh no he's back <laughs> bob you get the first pick on the most important segment the one that this entire podcast hangs on and everyone understands the layers of nuance of irony and referentialness with it. Is Ash in a coma? This is a movie where Ash gets superpowers. I feel like I have to, <laughs> like, I'm obligated to say yes, absolutely. <laughs> Bob's like, no, that's actually science. All you have to do is tap into the Christ consciousness layer <laughs> and then stand along the ley lines. He has a fever dream about all his friends dying. <laughs> Then he gets superpowers and everything's fine. <laughs> Shibuya, how do you feel about this? Is Ash in a coma? I think he is. Because if Aura <laughs> is a manifestation of a person's life force and Ash's is very strong, this means that his connection to the dream is becoming weaker and weaker. He is this close to waking up. And Pikachu being stolen away from him is also because the doctors are trying harder than ever to get him up and awake. The tree's antibody is trying to pull him out of the dream, and the Pokemon are trying to cling to him, trying to keep him stuck here. He's hanging on by a thread, but he is, <laughs> he is in a coma in this movie. Okay, well, uh, Chris, what do you think? Mm. Team Rocket are barely relevant to this movie, it feels like. Most of the time, they're in a trunk. But on the other hand, Ash does get superpowers. I'm going to say that the tree, he is in a coma... The tree okay. wants him dead. It is trying to pull him to the other side of the coma where he dies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, this is dark. <laughs> Lucario knew and saved him. He's like, we can't let the darkness take you yet, Ash. I hate to sound like I'm a contrarian here, but there's nothing in this movie but science. Uh, <laughs> as long as you tap into the there are four quarters to the earth okay and if you tap into the ley lines of the Christ Consciousness Network you too can unlock your aura just like Ash I didn't see anything outside of the ordinary this is all just normal science I'm going to say he's not in a coma in this movie <laughs> I can't wait for him to get his bonkai in the next movie that's going to oh, rule no. <laughs> but then he shares it with another kid oh no oh no we have to kill him. <laughs> it's going to be that kid from season one. That, that Ash kid drowns was Tracy Sketch. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> that kid should be in prison. Um, Agro, what do you think? 
Chris is 100% right about the tree representing death. This entire story is Ash battling a guilt complex manifested from him realizing that Pikachu is a manifestation of all of his feelings toward his dog, which he lost in the same car accident that put him under. Uh, Lucario is the memory of that dog surfacing, which is why as soon as he comes back, Pikachu has been taken away from Ash. And as he at first reacts violently to Lucario's presence, even though they're so similar, he sort of comes to terms with the fact that, yes, this was something that he had that he needs to let go, along with his survivor's guilt for being the only one who survived the accident, even in this sort of halfway in-between state that he's in. Well, uh, that puts it at everyone but me is wrong. So we're going to move on to our next segment, RCS Ex Machina. How big are the plot holes just so the movie ends on the status quo of the show? Shibuya, what are you thinking? This is just another town we've never seen before. This is just another one-off area. Nothing really gets fucked with. And they, they go to Pokey San Francisco or whatever by the end of the credits. So I'm going to have to give this like a two. Because like the only thing that really changes is that like kid is out there in the world meeting the Jirachi Wishmaker cucks, I guess. And that's it. <laughs> so uh, you live like this? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, what do you think on a scale of one to ten? How convenient is this? Zero. Ash walks out of this movie with superpowers. <laughs> we just now have to consider that for the rest of the franchise. <laughs> well, that's true. It's very not convenient for me. I'm going to have to legally uh, stand on this bracket here. You must give it a one, though. <laughs> oh my. Okay, one. <laughs> Holy God, though. It really is not convenient that Ash just ends the movie by going, and this will be the case forever. <laughs> Maybe when they were making the movie, they assumed that people would be like, well, the gloves are, well, let him use the superpowers, obviously. So he can't do that ever again. He left the gloves there. I don't know. He activated all those time flowers without the gloves. He did. Yeah, that's how he channeled it. That's not the only thing that let him use it. Yeah, that just helped him interface with the crystals. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he can do that at any time, which is how he's going to use his aura to... To build a wish board and wish Misty back into the series. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also going to have to give this one. I would not say it's convenient to deal with the ramifications of Ash has the soul, has an ancient soul full of aura in him. <laughs> that, that's really a lot to deal with. <laughs> Possibly the least convenient baggage to deal with moving on from any of these films. <laughs> That's the reason we don't see Ash's dad. It's the ghost of Sarah in game. Oh, my God. Oh, uh -huh. no. <laughs> Agra, what do you think? Well, I mean, like, yeah, I, the, Ash is never going to mention this again. Like, we, we find out that chi magic is real and learnable by humans, and this doesn't affect the rest of the series. Would that not result in a, in a high number in this category? You're going to regret your words and deeds and when in movie 18 he joins in for a fucking aura sphere with Lucario and we go, see? It was real the whole time. He's not forgetting it. It's like if we found out in this movie, like Ash saw, shot someone with a gun and he's like, I'm always carrying. That's some <laughs> shit we have to bring into every other film. The pistol is with me. I'm not going to be able to handle it when he uses the fucking family Kamehameha against Dark Rai. Yeah. In one of the later movies. <laughs> right? <laughs> Any moment, man. But yeah, no, like the story of this movie proves that a lot of things are tangibly real that probably shouldn't be. And everyone is just going to act <laughs> like it's not. I'm going to give this like an eight. <laughs> Bob, where are you coming in on this scale? I also, I, I agree with most of you guys, but like, it seems like they've just left a lot here. Like, left up in the air. Yeah, he absolutely has superpowers. <laughs> so, I am I guess I'll have to give it a two, because they also, I guess the only thing that feels like they had to undo it is killing everyone. <laughs> they did have to undo killing literally everyone so that the movie could end and go back to normal. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So maybe he actually deserves a 10. Uh, you, you tell me. Uh, but yeah, that's not a plot hole. That's the thing, Bob. It has to be plot holes. 
<laughs> okay, that's true. It has to be wished away almost by an on-screen or uh, behind-the-screen element mm. in order to conveniently wrap this up. And I, I, which I mean, I think would qualify there a little bit. You know, believe in your theory that they were dead for a bit there, which I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just leave a perfect middle of the road at a five. Okay. Because it's unsure, uncertain. <laughs> Bob, the safe candidate. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is it. We're at the end. We now need to give it a rating. <laughs> a rating out of 493, because as you know, this is a fourth gen movie. This is a great system and I love it. I love every time I get a comment. I'm upset, I think. <laughs> uh, first off in the rating for the movie segment is Chris. Chris, where are we coming in at? I thought this was pretty good. I always love when these movies just make up the weirdest fucking shit. <laughs> and this was a lot. This, this leaned into that a lot more than just here's a new city. Or uh, we introduced a new character whose motivation is that his pants fell down and Team Magma all pointed and laughed. At him. <laughs> yeah. So I really like that. Ash getting superpowers is stroke inducing. And there was a lot of good Pokemon sounds. So I'm going to give this a 412. Ooh, that sounds really high. <laughs> Let's move now to me. I thought this was great. There's something really amazing about the background art in this movie. Like, when you don't get those shots with terrible CG, you actually get some really good painterly-looking art in a lot of places. It's a super neat look. I loved, as I said earlier, the Pokemon representation here. And, my God, Regirock rules. Incredible movie. Very interesting shift to horror near the end. Interesting ideas. And it's not a direct replica of a Miyazaki film. It is just part of one for a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to give this what I consider a pretty high score of 429. Next is Agro. This movie, it had everything. It had a cool story. It had a wizard. It had side characters that showed up and did things and were there for the whole movie. <laughs> I honestly just had a great time with this insane story where Ash gets chi magic and then pretends he doesn't have it forever. <laughs> this is getting like a flat 450 from me. Nice. Bob. Yeah, I think that this movie was really great. I, the middle of it's a little weak. Like I feel like it ha hits a bump there after they leave the kingdom. And it kind of feels like we're filling time and seeing lots of flashbacks. No, but that's a concussion, Bob. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but then once we get to the tree, this movie goes crazy. Yeah, it does. So I'm going to give it like a 415. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. You sound uncertain. <laughs> that's might have something to do with this number <laughs> scale being madness. <laughs> Bob's numbers aren't going to make any sense without, like, at the end of this, I should just go, okay, Bob, you need to rate all these movies out of 10 and it won't match up at all. With the <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> Don't worry. Next, we're gonna do we're gonna do a series on Mega Man Battle Network, and I'm gonna give you a complex formula you have to figure out. <laughs> I'll just play it like Tetra Master to that point, and be like, "This number looks cool." <laughs> You're like, "You can't <laughs> trick me. None of these numbers matter." Shibuya, you're the last one. What score are you giving this? I think this one probably falls in the middle of all the Gen Three movies for me because. It learned its lesson from Jirachi Wishmaker about forcing a big kaiju antagonist at the end, but it also didn't learn the lesson of maybe we don't need four days of them driving to the location as <laughs> right. a, a thing. <laughs> yeah. Some of the plot points felt kind of forced, like the time flowers. I knew exactly where it was going and they mm -hmm. were just so blatant about it. And the Reggies, I wish they had been established earlier because it's very clearly, this is our last Gen 3 movie. Hurry up. We need to put all of our legendaries in there. Put the Reggies in. As good as they are, I think if they had been telegraphed at all in that little storybook sequence, then it would have been fine. And this isn't even taking into account how they did my boy ho oh dirty. I'm trying to leave that bias out of this particular segment. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> if the Reggies had been better integrated, I could probably give it a higher score. But as it is, I'm sitting around 395 for it. Okay. Well, plugging that in, this is a bunch of numbers, and I get to see both those numbers and what they actually translate to. This is a very interesting, audience. I will not share it with you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for listening to Pokemon Go to the Movies, number eight. 
Wait, I want the Japanese name. One second, we're doing that one. Mew in the Wave here, which, by the way, lost an award at an anime, an American anime awards. It, it lost best anime feature to Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. Yeah! Boo, that's so wrong. <laughs> no, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I had a stroke when I read that on Wikipedia. I'm like, excuse me. That's awesome. I love anime. <laughs> I do love anime. <laughs> that, I, I gotta tell you, Advent Children goes up like three points if a Reggie Rock shows up. Oh my oh. god! Can you imagine if instead of the Bahamut they fight in the middle, it's just Reggie Rock? <laughs> oh, that would be so good. It just erupts into the middle of that town, and everyone's like, "What the hell is that?" As it goes, dung 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 dung. <laughs> Barrett's just got a so tiny cool. register steel for a hand. <laughs> oh my god. Not everyone has prepared a new slogan for Pokemon Go to the movies, so we will in fact test out our new ending slogans next time. For this time, uh, we'll see your balls next time. The executive producers for this Gig Boots video are Esme, Ely Broyles, Spaceman Spiff, Redblaze27, Brendan O'Sullivan, a reminder for Symphony of War, Cooper Tank, Very Best Plot, Iconic Bane, and Rado. Thank you very much to our executive producers, and also these guys. If you want to become an executive producer or normal patron, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.